Hi folks, we're back with another tutorial, this time looking at the game mechanics for quick time events. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a placeholder that is a trigger that when we step onto it will pop up a UI message on our display telling us that we need to do something quickly. When you do that, we'll then get a debugging message in the editor that's telling us that you are successful and when you're not currently seeing the UI telling you to do the action, hitting that button will have no effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. I'm gonna just start from scratch in a first person map. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to set this up for the quick time events. And then inside of this, I'll go ahead and I'll create a user interface widget blueprint. I'll make a user widget and I'm gonna name this basic quick time event. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna open this up. Let's bring this off my out of my other monitor so that we can see it. And in order to get this position properly, I always like to use a canvas panel. And I then, in this case, I'm just gonna go up to common and throw some text in here. I'll select that text and I'll make it anchored to the center. I'll jump down to our fonts and I'll make sure that my justification is centered and then I'll change the text so that it's giving us a quick message of quick hit the E key. And once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and move that to my zero zero so that it's centered, pretty well centered. Actually, with that size, I'm going to need to do negative 50 and negative 15 to get that centered. Okay, let's go ahead and compile and save that. So I now have the message that will pop up when the event is happening. Obviously, if you're building your own QuickTime event, hopefully there'll be some kind of more interesting mechanic, but this is a great placeholder to get it all set up so that you can put your additional functionality into your build. So once I have this in the designer, I'm going to go to the graph. And in the graph, I'm going to right click and create a new event for a key. And I'm going to find the key I want to use, which is the E key. And when the E key is pressed, I'm simply going to print a string into the editor that is going to say, you pressed the E key and time. And excitement. Okay. So the idea here is that if I press the key E key at any other time, it won't be calling this print string because the widget will not be active and it will only be when the widget is active that this is going to work. Okay. So this is compiled. It's saved. I no longer need that. What I now need is something that is going to trigger the quick time event. So I could put something on the level blueprint uh, just for testing sakes, but you know, thinking of a game like Death by Daylight where you walk up to a piece of equipment and then something happens, I'm going to build a marker in space and when I step on that space, the event will happen. So the way that I like to do this is I like to create a new actor in the scene. And let's position that somewhere that we will see it. Preferably somewhere where we'll see it right when we log on. make sure and there we go we're on the ground all right so I'm gonna take that actor I'm gonna select it hit F2 to change the name 
and I'm going to call it the QTE marker. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a blueprint. QTE marker blueprint, or better yet, BP QTE marker. And I'll save it in my QuickTime events. Great. And there we go. So now I've opened it up. I'm going to give a visual indicator that there is something to step on here. So I'm going to add a cube. And I'm going to scale that cube down to 0.1 in the Z. There we go. And then I'm also going to add a box collision. And I'm going to make that 2 by 2 by... Two by two by two. So I just make it three. There we go. Okay, so that's all set. Now I have something that when I step will be stepping onto this spot, I can trigger something else to happen. So I'm going to switch over to my event graph, and I'm going to use event actor begin overlap to make all of this happen. So let's drag this pin off and we're gonna say create widget. Now I always like to repeat this because this no longer says create widget after I put it in. So if you miss that, it's create widget. There we go. And now I'm gonna select the basic QTE that I created earlier. I can spot it right there or I can just start searching. There we go. And now after I've put in the class, it will now say create basic QTE widget. So it's a little bit, if you, if you miss that step, it can be confusing, but there we are. We wanna drag off owning player and I'm just gonna say get local player controller from ID. Uh, this is for a single player game. So I'm just grabbing the zero controller ID for this player. And then I always like to take the return value of creating this widget and set this as a variable. I'll promote the variable right at the top. There we go. And then I'm going to call this QTE widget. There we go. Okay, and that's going to allow me to reference this specific widget later. If I then drag this off, I can say add to viewport. And I'm actually going to let, let it select QTE widget, which will show you that I can do it this way with the variable, or in this case, I can just do that. And I don't need to do a get for my variable. And I'm then going to add a delay. And the delay right now is a fifth of a second, two tenths of a second. So I'm gonna make it two seconds so that it stays on screen for a little bit of time. And obviously you can tune this to whatever kind of speed you're looking for. So this will work to have all of the QuickTime event show up on our screen. There are additional steps, but let's just test it right now and make sure everything's working. Okay, so there's the item. I step on it and it says, quick, hit the E key. And it should say that for two seconds before it goes away, but I haven't included the go away. So if I hit the E key, it'll tell me in the upper left, you press the E key in time. And if I hit it multiple times, it will tell me all of that multiple times. So I know that my functionality is working, but it's not a quick time event yet because it doesn't go away. There isn't a limited amount of time. So after your delay, you're gonna want to remove the widget. And the way that we do that is remove from parent, which looks like it needs to be uncontact sensitive. There we go. And this is where could just drag over from here, but I think that's messy. So I like to pull in the variable and say, get the widget. And I'm telling the script what widget we're removing. I'm being specific. 
Now, this is an interesting step and let me just show you what happens here. We still need to do a few more steps because I step on this and I hit the E key and then it disappears. But if I hit the E key, oh, interesting. Sometimes if you hit the E key after that, the widget will still be in the memory even though you've removed it from parent. Um, so it's actually best practices to also do a couple other steps. Number one, we're going to, actually let's undo that. I'm gonna drag in QT widget. I'm gonna say set QTE widget. And if I'm doing this, it should be setting it to null. And I can drag this off again and I can say collect garbage. So what these two steps do is it makes sure that there is no reference to the widget that we were just using by setting the variable to null and then collecting the garbage will dispose of all of the unused things in memory, which includes this widget. So it looks like this step might not always be necessary, but I've definitely built this and had the widget stay in memory. So this will make sure that if you hit the E key after the widget disappears and is set to null and the garbage is collected, that you won't have the success marker show up on your screen. Okay, so that is just a quick introduction of how to set up a quick time event for your game. Let's put this script up on the screen for those of you who wanna blow through this really quickly and remind yourself at the end. There we go. Oh, maybe we can tighten this up just a little bit more, fit more of it on the screen. Okay, there we go. Now, my intention is to build a little bit more onto this. Uh, I have a couple more tutorials where we look at the graphics and how to make the widget a little bit fancier, but hopefully this will get you started. And if you're trying to put a quick time event into your game, this will let you do it in Unreal 5. Let me know if you run into any problems in the comments below, and I'll try and get you answers as quick as I can. Thanks for joining.